Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Angels of Scaly Wings. In this mod that we're playing right now, it's exploring Remy's bad mod. We're stuck back in the human world, it's just us, Remy, and we have recently discovered one other person. And we're gonna see what happens next. We don't know, actually, because we're kind of stuck and we're sort of at a loss of what to do next. I woke from my sleep, feeling extremely well rested. As I looked outside my window, a shining ray of sunlight gleamed into my eyes. Yep, it's daytime. When I went into the living room, I found Remy still sleeping on the couch. Morning. It's going to be a day full of work today, so I recommend that we start getting ready as soon as possible. Remy slowly rose and stretched before greeting me. Afterwards, he slowly put his tie on and went to the kitchen to get something to eat. When both of us had had our meals, we went outside to meet up with Logan. So, what do you think Logan's up to right now? Well, I think he'd most likely either be sleeping or working on some projects of his now that he received all the information he wants from the PDA. That's true, after all, the PDAs were only available to high-ranking authorities for whatever knowledge was already stored within, like manuals for medical devices, or to those who were lucky enough to still own a working one. And there was the fact that the officials issued an order that all PDAs that still worked should be handed in, so that they could be used in the trade. He wouldn't have had access to anything more than the scraps of information we still have in some books, or the information he retained before the solar flare hit us and disrupted everything. Makes sense. I assume you were one of the lucky ones with the working PDA, correct? Yet, yeah, although everything that was already stored on it wasn't much use to a society of dragons. Things like personal notes or records for the jobs I had to do, to name a few. In the end, my PDA was completely wiped so that it could be used in the trade. I think that information like personal notes would still be useful after all. Maybe some psychologists could gather some insight on how your average human would think or go about their daily lives. I guess so, still, whatever the authorities had ordered needed to be done. It just makes me wonder though. How did our scientists get the information on all the PDAs? Last time I checked, there weren't any archives still operational that they could have transferred the knowledge from. Well, maybe some divine human magic was involved. But we're not divine beings. I know. It's just a joke. It's all fine. Where are we now? Oh, we walked through the city some further until we reached Logan's house. I knocked on the door and waited several minutes for Logan to respond. Hello? I started to get worried about him, but my fears were relieved when the door opened. Logan revealed himself, looking far more tired than he did yesterday. Sorry about taking so long, I just needed to finish something up while you got bags under your eyes, man. Are you okay? You look exhausted. That's because I am. I stayed up all night going through your PDA and seeing what information I could use for my generator, as well as some other things. Looks like you were lucky to get the PDA filled with mostly things about technology, as well as a bit about some infrastructure. I would admit, there were some strange things stored there. One such thing was a recipe for pancakes, of all things another example was... lipstick. Awkward. <laughs> it's a long story. And I'm not even gonna ask. Anyways, I've made a very important discovery during my research. Did you find something that you can use to improve your generator? Not yet, although I'm feeling pretty close to doing so. The things I found are far more useful in the long term though, probably even more th than the generators. Really? Well, spit it out already. No need for the dramatic build up. Oh, fine. In short, I found blueprints for the water treatment plant, as well as the factory that supplied food for the city. With the generators we have, as well as some extra suppliers that we could salvage from parts we know are beyond saving, we should be able to repair both to a point where they could be somewhat functional. You really outdone yourself by being able to make a plan like that, Logan. And it only took me a single sleep this night. <laughs> wow. How would you go about doing such a task? You know very well that even with Remy, we wouldn't be able to repair all of it in a reasonable amount of time. Repairing an entire facility is an immense task without construction robots, you know. That's what I'm still trying to figure out. I'll have to put that aside for later though, at the very least. We can start making the preparations for repairs and reconstructions. We just need to decide on which one we should start on first. Uh, the water or food? Probably water. No point, you know, getting dehydrated, even if you've got loads of food. 
Water. A wise choice. Clean water is hard enough to come by, so being able to get more of it would probably help us not get sick. Even if we have far more water than food currently, we can't afford one of us getting sick and putting the survival of the city in danger. So it's settled then? Not unless we've got second thoughts. Nope, we're all good. Great, we should start working on as soon as we can then. Meet me at the water treatment plant in one hour. I still have some things to get ready, so I can't come with you right now. Try not to fall asleep. I've done that more than enough times in my life when I need to be somewhere important. I'll try. Logan went back inside while me and Remy went to the water treatment plant. Here we are. Can we fix it? It didn't take long for us to reach our destination. However, we still had quite some time left before the scheduled meetup. I wonder if Logan's going to arrive on time. He's a really dedicated man. When he says he'll do something, Logan would try everything in his might to do it. Still, maybe he has fallen asleep for a few minutes? It's not like I can really blame him either. He has been through a lot these past few days, and getting his hands on a working generator as well as a bunch of human knowledge must be really exciting for him. Even if it is causing him to lose him some of its much needed sleep. I used to be in a very similar situation too. Sometimes I had to stay up all night to do some work that the council assigned to me. Sure, I used the bed in my office for when it was really late at night, but sometimes you just couldn't afford to sleep, or else everybody would be angry at you for not completing your work on time. Sometimes you'd even be angry at yourself for not finishing said work and meeting expectations. Hey, you shouldn't think about things like that now. Remember, still we're in the past. All that matters is what you can do right now. I know. It's just that the past is always the hardest to move on from. Especially with cases like... Suddenly, I hear a vroom coming from far away, and after a few minutes, I saw Logan on the horizon riding with what appeared to be a motorcycle. He approached us shortly thereafter. Yo, yo, yo. Afternoon, fine gentlemen. I see we're quite early, correct? Well, there wasn't really a point just wandering around when we could just wait for you here instead. How did you get a motorcycle though? Last time I checked, you still went around the city on foot. Last time you checked was more than a month ago. In short, the authorities gave it to me as a reward when I agreed to try and create a generator. The gas needed for the motorcycle, however, is another story. At least you got an effective way of travelling around the city that might be really useful at some point. It already has been incredibly useful. Now, here are some plans that I made that we could use. Logan pulled out a few blueprints and a hoard of papers filled with his notes. All three of us went through the numerous options available and eventually settled on a plan. I was able to go inside the building and see what parts of the facility could still be used, while Logan scoured for any salvageable electronics. Remy was left with looking for any structural flaws that could put the building in danger. Well, he gets nothing. Alright, inside. Looks... Looks okay. I entered the water treatment with a feeling of uncertainty, since anything could go wrong at any point during my search. Okay, what's this? I looked around to see if anything could be salvaged, but most of the metal scraps I could find had already rusted beyond any use. However, upon further inspection, I spotted a few boxes with some supplies near the entrance to the main chambers. There was a box filled with wooden planks, and another with steel bolts. Behind all of them were a few piles of bricks and ceiling tiles, as well as some cement. These will definitely prove useful. Alright, take that, good. Keep searching. I wandered around the facility some more, hoping to find something that could be used to repair the machines or something else that will prevent further degradation, but I couldn't find anything else. I decided that now was the time to report my findings to Logan and Remy. Suddenly, I heard a strange creaking noise from the roof. Uh-oh! Don't like it, a support beam comes loose and soon after crashes into an unstable wall, shattering a large window pane, spreading broken glass all around me. I could hear someone call out, Yo, uh, you good? Yeah, I'm just startled. All, all good. Glad to hear it. Quite ironic that you were nearby, don't you think? How so? I wanted to warn you about the potential hazards of the support beams on the roof, but it seems that those very support beams caused me to find you. Okay, I just hope that it doesn't happen again. If the beam's angle was just a bit off, then I could have died. Oh, agreed. 
We both went outside, deciding that we should deliver our reports to Logan as soon as possible. Luckily for us, he was already waiting outside. Are you two okay? I heard a strange crash from inside, and I figured that you two might be in trouble. We're fine, thanks. Sadly, I think that this will happen a lot more often. According to what I found, a lot of the supports are falling. I'm no engineer, but even I can see that when walls and supported beams start to wear out, bad things follow. Luckily, I think that most of it could still be repaired, even if some parts are beyond saving. I think it would be best if those faulty parts are removed entirely to avoid further damages. I see, this makes for some tricky problems, as it could crash into the main purifiers if we take too long. Are the major facilities still intact? As far as I could see, everything should still be secure, only the parts on the outermost corridors need serious attention. Excellent, so what did you find? Me? Uh, well, I found a few supplies near an entrance to the main chamber that could be used to either reinforce weaker parts of the building, or completely repair parts to effectively start the plant back up. Aside from that, nothing else. That is, unless you consider rusted scraps of metal useful. No, no I don't. What were the materials you found? Bricks, cement, wood, ceiling tiles and steel bolts. Okay, looks like the officials wanted to repair the plant to try and get clean water flowing into the city once more. Not that they could do much anyway. All the necessary components were still there in the purifiers, so nothing needs to be added. I'm glad that the only thing needed to get the water treatment plant up and running again is some power and a few repairs to some of the purifiers. Looks like we struck lucky, aside from the minor accident you two got yourselves into. Regardless, you two did a good job. I believe that we'll be able to repair the water treatment plant in a few weeks if we plan it well enough. I'm glad that I could have helped, Logan. Me too. So, now what do we do? Whatever you want, I'll try to make plans for our next move, so in the meantime, you two take it easy. Maybe you could, I don't know, explore a bit more? We actually already did that yesterday. However, I think that you're the one who should take it easy, Logan. After all, you didn't sleep last night. It would be far better for you if you rested for a while. Alright. Let's just hope that... What? What's that noise? What's going on? Suddenly, a loud cluster of noises erupted from far outside the city borders. Strangely, it sounded like a swarm of bees, but far more mechanical. What? Who this? What was that? Damn it, and here I hoped that things wouldn't get worse. I'm way too tired to deal with this right now. Are you talking about... sadly... Raiders? Who? What? Wait, are they those mobile groups you once told me about? Yeah, only this time, they're going to cause a lot of problems if we don't prepare this very second. I'll take my motorcycle and ride to the northern gate, as is most likely where they're going to appear. Rebby, see if you could fly and estimate how long until they arrive. Uh, I'll try. Rebby took off with a heavy beating of his wings. A few seconds passed before I saw him scouting the city borders in the sky. Okay, I'll need you to hide the generators and your PDA from the raiders, or else all our work will be for nothing. But a generator is already hidden at my place, with the other two still being in your possession. As for the PDA, it should still be where you last put it, since you never gave it back. That's not good, is it? Ah, oh, man. Good enough. Hop on, then. We'll see what we can do. Who, who are the raiders? I know nothing about these people. We've never met them before. I climbed onto Logan's motorcycle as we rushed to the northern gates. Luckily, due to how fast Logan drove, it didn't take us long before we reached the destination. Logan rushed into one of the guard towers and armed himself with a submachine gun as an extra bit of preparation. Remy landed right next to me shortly afterwards. Looks like Logan made a good guess. The raiders are heading to this gate as we speak, and by the looks of it, they're going to be about five minutes. Just in time then. However, they don't really look that hostile. In fact, I spotted a few individuals that seemed really exhausted from travel. I don't think they really want to cause harm. We'll have to find out. I think that it would be best if you hid somewhere for now, Remy. I fear that the raiders, if they saw a dragon, they might start to panic and open fire. Understood. Even though they might have already spotted him just now. Still, it would be nice not to run away from everything for once. I know. Okay, hide. Go hide. A few minutes passed before a large group of people appeared at the gate. There were quite a lot of motorcycles, with several people clinging to each other on top. 
A worn out man that seemed to lead the gang climbed off his motorcycle and walked toward me and Logan. Strangely enough, the cloak he wore somewhat reminded me of the administrator, but without the mask. Wait, wait, don't shoot. Then you better tell us what the heck you're doing here. Make it quick. Okay, okay. First off, my name's Martin. I don't want to hurt you. I know that we might look like a group of raiders, but it's only because of the fact that we have been constantly running away from the last few weeks. What are you running from? How do I put it in a light way? Um, we're running away from other raiders. So you're telling me that the people here who look like raiders aren't raiders? I still think that a valid explanation is due. I can see that Logan gripped his gun even more tightly. Luckily, he lowered his weapon, immediately causing a noticeable drop in tensions. It's quite a long story. Do you want the short version or the full explanation? Uh, make it quick. Um, no, let's, let's, let's listen. What's going on? Okay, I'll try to be as thorough as I can. Please bear with me. Big story time. Fill us in. We came from a somewhat small city, about 400 miles southeast from here. That's about 643 kilometers, if you didn't know. Personally, I believed that we were the only place left on Earth that was still somewhat civilized, as we couldn't establish communication with anywhere else. We held out for quite some time after the solar flare hit, with enough resources and technology left from the old world that we could operate on a very similar basis to how we did back then, to a certain degree. Most of our facilities and generators were functional, and if they weren't, we still had the skill and tech to be able to repair them. My guess is that we simply lucked out. Sadly, all this technology caused many of the civilians to start becoming greedy. People who I thought I could trust started to turn on the city, and the people that thrived within. I thought that tensions only raised temporarily, and they would eventually be settled down. How wrong I was. A civil war started to break out between those who wanted to take what we had for themselves, and those that still wanted to help each other with a sense of community spirit. Those that wanted what we had for themselves were few, sure, but they had a very dangerous mentality. If I can't have it for myself, then nobody can have it. Things started to get dangerous for those who still wanted to help each other, so a handful of people decided that it would be best to run away from the city while they still had opportunity to do so. Those people are the very people you see in front of you now. I've only heard reports of what happened to the city by a few people that joined us later. Any spare equipment that was left has been destroyed in skirmishes by the looters. The city is now a large leap of rubble and ash, with us being the only survivors. Eventually, after searching for a sign of any city that happened to still be standing, we encountered a group of raiders. As if we lucked out again, they took pity on us after hearing our story. Since we had no other choice for survival, we had to join them. The amount of horrors I committed while under their wings will haunt me for the rest of my life. I helped loot and destroy ruined camps, and caused chaos to any group still out there in the desert. Okay, so hold up, hold up. They said that they weren't raiders, and yet, here he is admitting to being a raider. Do not trust. Alright. In the end, we committed the very same acts we were originally running away from. One day, we decided that we simply couldn't continue anymore. We took what we needed the most, like clean water and food rations, as well as some gas to refuel our motorcycles and left. Sadly, even in the dead of night, we didn't go unnoticed. I think that we did successfully escape, since we hadn't been ambushed in about a week, but I can't be sure. Most of my group were still paranoid, however, so we needed help, and fast. One of our scouts delivered that hope to us when he found another city-like structure on the horizon. Morale started to increase dramatically. I can't tell you how happy everybody was, knowing that maybe, just maybe, we could return to our old life again. The journey here, however, wasn't so easy. Our gas supplies were running dangerously low, even with the reserves we took from the raiders. The only choice we had left was to transfer fuel from our most damaged motorcycles and abandon them in favour of those that were most likely to make the journey. This caused some problems as you could imagine. Not everybody could be transported so some had to go on foot. We eventually decided that it would be best if we made shifts, taking turns to ride the bikes and wait for the others to catch up. It's a slow process, sure, but the most efficient one that we could manage. And that's the story. Okay, eventually, after many hardships, we made it to this city. The rest is history. Oh, I see. That's very sad and all, but how do we know that the raiders haven't secretly followed you here? Heck, how do we know that you're not secretly raiders? There are a few holes I see in your story, so I'm not sure I believe you. 
you're overreacting, Logan. So what if there are a few holes in the story? Nobody can remember every single part of their life, much less when they're under an extreme amount of pressure like those, uh, you can call us refugees. Ah, yeah, refugees. Shouldn't you at least have some time to think before you jump to conclusions? Mm-hmm. Fine, we'll discuss it with Remy and see what he thinks about it. Okay, Martin, here's the deal. We're going to discuss whether we should welcome you to what remains of our city or not. In the meantime, feel free to wait outside until we make our decision. Thanks so much. You don't know how much this means to us all. This guy is suspiciously grateful that we kind of told him to back up. Martin left to tell the rest of the group about our conversation, as well as to give orders to wait outside the city walls until further notice, while me and Logan went to go and find Remy. Remy, what do you think? More friends is good, more friends is bad. What do we what do we think? Wait, so there was another human city this whole time? Seems so. I don't know how they managed to live in the harsh conditions our city was left in after the solar flare, but they somehow managed. Fascinating. I would have never figured that there would still be anyone else left besides you and Logan. Still, don't you think it's strange that nobody realised that until now? Well, I now have a suspicion that the authorities were able to make contact with other settlements in some way or another, but never told the masses. Alright, enough with your suspicions. Now that Rim has been informed, we need to make a plan with these so-called refugees. I say that we prevent them from entering. The risk is far too great for untrustworthy people to enter and destroy everything we've worked for. Besides, they've stolen before. What prevents them from doing so again? Not to mention the potential risk of more raiders coming. This whole situation just seems like one big fat trap to me. I feel that we should let them in. If what Martin says is true, then we could potentially have much more skilled individuals that could help with some of the repairs. We could also start to repopulate the city. When the time comes, yeah. The point I'm trying to make is that by letting these people in, the chance for our survival would increase drastically. Even more so with the generators and the PDA we have. Not if they steal those first, however. Or ruin what's left of the infrastructure we could actually repair. If that were to be the case, then there won't be any hope to repair anything, regardless of whatever help we might receive. They can't be trusted, end of discussion. But we don't have any other choice. Logan, you said yourself that we can't hope to repair anything necessary if we don't get more people. Why would you pass the opportunity up when it presents itself to you on a silver platter? Because I know the danger when I see it, and these people have the word danger written all over their faces. Hmm... Okay, what do you think would be the best course of action? Yeah, now that i thought about it, you haven't said anything yet. What should we do with the raiders? You meant refugees. Whatever. Oh god. I'm gonna go with we desperately need any extra help we can get. There's only the three of us. If we can build some extra stuff with extra, you know, hands and that, it's gonna be helpful, right? We need all the help we can get right now. There's simply no way that we could rebuild the entire city if it's just the three of us. Besides, what Remy said is correct. If at least some of the people were skilled, then we could actually make the city prosper again. We simply have no other choice. There might be risks. We'll just have to see how it goes. Did you even listen to what I said? If we let them in, then any help that we could receive won't matter if they steal and destroy everything first. Look, Logan, if we turn Martin and his group away, then we could kiss all hope goodbye. It's a bit of a gamble, but we gotta do it. You're willingly throwing away any hope that we might have here. You know very well that the city will degrade without help, as repairing the entire city all by ourselves is impossible. We have nothing to lose, well I think we have everything to lose. If they do turn out to destroy the city, then we're doomed. If we don't accept them, we're also doomed. However, if Martin and his group turns out to be helpful to us, then we can thrive again. What's he gonna do about it? Okay, as much as I don't want to do this, I guess that I'll have to trust your judgement. Just don't come crying to me when all of our work has been undone. Okay, I'll go tell Martin then. Got some good news for you guys. I went outside the city gate and found Martin talking with some of the members of his group. And when he spotted me, his face seemed to light up. Oh, you're back. So, have you come to a conclusion? Yeah, 
You and your group are free to reside in the city, under two conditions. One, your group will help to restore what's left of the city, so that we all may thrive. Two, under no circumstances are you or anybody else allowed to cause any form of chaos, or the entire group is going to get expelled from the city walls. Do you accept the terms? I gladly do. I don't think words can express how much I'm grateful to you for giving us a chance. So, when are we allowed to enter? Feel free to enter any time you want. Oh, and don't mind where you can stay. Most of the houses are empty, so any place will suffice. Gotcha. Martin went to his group to tell the good news, and soon many cheers could be heard. There was a huge rush at the gates with several motorcycles swarming the streets, and after a few minutes, the outskirts were empty again. However, Martin stayed behind with a confused expression on his face. Wait, I thought there would be more people here. This entire city just seems like a ghost town to me. It's because it essentially is. Logan appeared from around the corner, still holding his submachine gun. I don't know what he was expecting, but yeah, it's literally just three of us. Just a few weeks ago, the entire city was bustling with life. Now, it's the three of us. Three. Forgive me, but I've only seen you and, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to show you the other person right here now is Logan. My apologies, I only now realise that I haven't formally introduced myself yet. Well, yeah. The third person's Remy, but he's a bit, um, hmm. You hear dragon? He's, he's foreign. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. Oh, don't worry about it. After travelling for so long, I doubt that match would surprise me now. You wanna bet? You wanna bet? I significantly doubt that. Prepare yourself for what you're about to see. Logan then called for Remy, and after a short while, he shyly appeared at the city gate. Martin's face twisted with shock and fear. Ah! <laughs> Dragon! <laughs> Calm down. Remy's friendly. I promise he won't hurt you. Hey, you must be Martin, correct? It talks! Uh, I could see that Martin's knees start to grow weak, and he soon fell over, but I managed to catch him just before he hit the ground. Are you okay? No response came. It seems that Martin's unconscious. Damn it. Looks like we'll have to take care of the brat for a while. No need to be so harsh, Logan. He's just trying to survive like the rest of us. I shouldn't have revealed myself so suddenly. If I was a bit more patient, then he wouldn't have passed out. You shouldn't worry, Remy. I doubt even the bravest would handle an encounter like that well. But you were perfectly fine when we first met. It's only because I knew that I was about to meet an entire civilization of dragons beforehand. Still, maybe we should explain everything to him as soon as he wakes up. That'd probably be for the best, yeah. If panic starts to rise because of the news of an actual existing dragon in the city, then we can kiss all our hopes and dreams goodbye. For good. I'll take him to your place if that's okay. Sure. Remy, do you want to come with me? It'd be my pleasure. I carried Martin on my back, and we went to Logan's house. It took a while, as Martin was surprisingly heavy, but we made it in the end. I said drop him off. I put Martin on the couch, and waited for him to wake up. Several hours passed before he returned to consciousness. This man must have been exhausted to be out for that long. Where am I? You're at Logan's house. You passed out just after seeing Remy. You mean the, uh... He shuddered. Dragon? Yeah? Do you want to see him again? I think I need to prepare myself a bit first, though. In the meantime, could you maybe tell me why the city's so empty? Okay, sure, it all started when we found a portal during one of our scouting missions. And then, yeah, just just play Angels of Scaly Wings, you'll, you'll figure it out. And now only me, Logan and Remy remain in the city. Amazing. An entire civilization filled with dragons, of all things. It's sad that they aren't alive anymore, though. I'm really sorry for all of your losses, in both dragon and humankind. Thanks. And so now you understand why our situation's so dire, and why we can't afford to risk anything too chaotic. I see. I just wish that we could have recovered some of our tech, though. If we combined what we had with what you have, then we could almost recreate a pre-solar flare city. Well, we can only dream now. But we don't have to. With your help, we could repair much of our broken infrastructure and electronics. I'm still immensely surprised that Logan actually managed to be able to repair something damaged by the flare. Our electricians had tried for months to get anything up and running again, but nothing worked. 
Maybe it was simply a mixture of dumb luck and genius skill. Maybe. I think I'm ready to see Remy now. Could you maybe get him for me? Of course. I called for Remy, to which he responded with a quick entrance to the room. Hello, is there anything I can help you with? Actually, Martin wanted to see you. Oh, Remy. I just wanted to say that I'm really sorry for freaking out. I didn't expect to see a living talking dragon. When Logan said that you would be a bit foreign, I didn't expect that this is what he meant. No worries, I understand it's really unusual for you, so don't feel too bad about it. Thanks, Remy. Friends? Friends? The two of them shaked hands, although I could see that Martin wasn't entirely comfortable yet. Well, it's really nice to meet you all. I think that I should go now and rejoin with the others. They're probably sick from worrying about me. See you tomorrow. Bye Martin, and can you find your way back? It'll work out eventually. Cheers. Okay, so hopefully Martin's not too freaked out by it. Martin left the house, leaving me and Remy alone. We decided that we should go back home, as it started to get dark. Before we did that, however, I took my PDA back from Logan so that I could put it somewhere more secure, just in case. Back home. Been a big day. Hopefully, new friends and not bad friends. Me and Remy arrived back home, tired from everything that happened today. I started to cook some dinner for us while Remy made himself comfortable on the floor. I served the food to Remy, who accepted it with a tired expression on his face. Thanks, Sushio. I'm sure that this will taste great. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I think everyone here can cook better than I can. But at least you can cook. You'll be surprised at just how many dragons can't actually cook. They'd rather spend their time hunting or eating out instead. We proceeded to finish our meals, with Remy finishing far later than I did. I started to prepare for tonight's rest when Remy interrupted me. I'm sorry to bother you, but I was wondering if I could sleep with you again. I know that I should sleep on my own but it's just really comforting to be with you. I mean, it's it's a big thing going to another world. Any company is welcome company because you know literally nobody else in this entire world. Anytime. Thanks. It does mean a lot, even if it doesn't look like it. Don't worry about it. I'm just happy that you're happy. I went to my bedroom, changed into my nightwear and climbed into my bed and Remy followed soon after. I felt Remy slowly hugging me, making sure not to press me too hard. It's really weird seeing him not have anything on, like the glasses are off and the ties off. Alright, hugs. I put my arms around Remy and hugged him. He smiled and threw his wings over me in a way similar to that of a blanket. As I started to fall asleep, I could feel Remy giving me a small lick on the cheek. Good night. Sleep well. And I think that that will do for this episode. It's going to be a new day next time. This is Usho signing off and hopefully I'll see you then.